So for uh, SN2 and E2, uh, the 2 stands for bimolecular, meaning that um, the reaction depends on the concentration of both the nucleophile and the substrate. Uh, call it second order kinetics as opposed to the, to the um, SN1 and E1. Uh, SN2 is determined by a strong nucleophile, uh, occurs primarily on a uh, primary carbon where there's uh, very little uh, to no steric hindrance from uh, surrounding interfering um, groups. Uh, it also occurs in a polar aportic solvent, whereas E2 uh, occurs in the presence of a strong base on a primary, secondary, tertiary carbon, also in polar and uh, aportic solvents. So let's try. Oh, uh, actually, we should list um, some good nucleophiles which would favor an SN2 hydroxide, anion, iodine, bromine, all the anions, and uh, other uh, nucleophiles that are decent but not as good are going to be chlorine and fluorine. Yeah, nucleophilicity actually decreases uh, the more electronegative you get. And the reason is because um, something with a negative charge on it, or anything with any charge on it, is going to want to be uh, pretty reactive. Everything in chemistry wants to kind of be at zero, calm, cool, and collect it all the time. Uh, so these guys are a little bit more, um, uh, these guys are a little bit more uh, reactive in terms of their nucleophilicity because this negative charge here is not as comfy. Okay, on these um, ions as they are here. So since chlorine and fluorine are very electronegative, this uh, negative charge is going to be a little bit more uh, comfy so that uh, its power in or strength as a nucleophile and its tendency to want to react with something is going to be less. So that's why these are fair nucleophiles. These are really good nucleophiles. So strong. Bases. Or uh, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. So whenever you see these in a reaction, that should be a, a red flag should go up that um, in water, uh, these are going to form OH minus. And um, you're going to have a, uh, well, you're going to have a reaction being conducted on a strong base. So let's try first an SN2. And uh, let's say I have something like this where carbon and a methyl group, and then it's attached to a uh, chlorine. Now, what's going to happen here is the nucleophile is going to come in, and the leaving group leaves. And it actually uh, kind of pushes it out so that what you have is uh, an, an inversion. Looks something like this. And then you get the chill minus over here. So actually, it almost looks like a uh, kind of like an umbrella that was inverted. That would be a, a great way to describe exactly what's happening in an SN2. Again, nucleophile comes in, leaving group leaves. And um, since OH minus is a better uh, nucleophile, it's going to push out the chlorine. Chlorine is going to become the leaving group. Try a uh, E2. 
two. Say methyl group here, and it's attached to a carbon. And a um, chlorine and another methyl group. Now, if the hydroxide behaves as a strong base, it's going to come in and pluck off this hydrogen here. And actually, it's going to pluck off the uh, hydrogen as a, as a proton and leave two electrons behind. This electron is going to go here to form a double bond in the leaving group leaves. So what you're left with is this. And the chlorine maintains that uh, negative uh, charge because that, that electron needs some place to go. That was originally uh, part of this bond here. So that's uh, SN2 and E2.